changes for you guys. There you go. So you'll see where it says midpoint. So what I was getting to, just getting ready to highlight, is the idea that the idea of mid is in the middle and then point. So it's basically the middle point. And that's what we're going to basically deal with today. So if you kind of look down here at number one, there's a theorem that's going to go with that in triangles as well. But it says label the coordinates of the vertices of triangle A, B, C. So what that simply means is go to those three corners of that triangle. And we're just going to label those points. So this point right here would have an X coordinate of two. Let me get this to work. And then the Y coordinate. Good start. There we go. So x coordinate of two and a y coordinate of ten. So a has the coordinates of two comma ten. C we are at x coordinate of two, a y coordinate of two. So this has a coordinate of two comma two. And then b is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two. So letter a. Find the segment AC, so that's the one that's going up and down. Probably don't need to prompt you at all with this. Go ahead and find the midpoint of segment AC, then label that as point M, and then tell me what those coordinates are. So without having to teach you some theorem, some formula or anything, this we can all do this probably, hopefully. Although it doesn't look great for you guys in the room. A little bigger. There we go. Okay, what do we get for that midpoint, Kim? Good. So he said two comma five. So that would have been right here. I wanted you to call that point M. That is the point two comma five. How did you do that, Kim? Okay. Um, so one, two, three. I like a lot of that. So you took 10 and divided that. So if that was your method, we got just a wee bit lucky. But you can confirm this, right? Because how many steps away from this one is this point? One, two, three, four. And then this one is one, two, three, four. So they're four steps away. That's why we know that's going to be the middle. So what I would have, what, what's he going to be even better? I thought you were going to just ruin the surprise for everybody. We'll ruin it now. Notice this vertical change. How, how many steps does it take to go from two to 10? 16. If I'm going to start at two and go up to 10, how many steps is that? Well, it's Monday morning, apparently. So if you have $2, let's put it that way, and then you need $10, you need eight more dollars, right? So what if you did eight divided by, right? I need to go eight steps, but I only want to get halfway there. So take the eight total steps, divide it in half, four, and then isn't that what we would do from this point? One, two, three, four, it gets us right in the middle. One, two, three, four, gets us right in the middle. All right, so that is the point two comma five, and that's going to be long term kind of what we're going to be doing here in a second. So two comma five. All right, so now letter B. If you got that one right, do whatever you did for the next one. So C B should also be a nice one. It's the last one that will be a little bit trickier. And then you're going to call the one in in between C and D. We'll call that point N. All right, Megan, you wrote something down. What do you got? Good. She said five comma two. I believe that is correct. So three, five. yeah. So we're right here. That is point N, and that is the point five comma two. How'd you do that, Megan? Good. She said she looked at it and she cut it in half. So in terms of cutting it in half, if I'm going to go from C to B, wouldn't that require one, two? three, four, five, six steps. And if we cut that in half, 
that would only be three steps. So that is why this one right here, three steps away, should be our midpoint. All right. Last one, A to B. Let's see if you can think your way through that one. When they're vertical lines, like the first one was, horizontal lines, like the second one was, those should be kind of nice. We don't need to talk too much about those probably. I think all would have had a method. So, so far we've gotten those two correct. See what you think for the one in between A and B. Did I label this one wrong, King? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one is wrong, right? Is that what you told me or did I write it wrong? That's what I, I think that's what I told you to come across. How's it wrong? Uh, let's look at it. Oh, let's just count. I'm at two, so then I go one, two, three, four, five, six. So aren't we up there at six? Sorry, that's my fault too. I should have caught that in the first place. Yeah, that should be two six. And then the other one is good, the five two. All right, letter C. Anybody think they have this midpoint? Let me see what it is so I don't screw this up again. One, two, three. Okay, what do you have, Megan? Good. So she said the point right here, what did I want you to call this? P, that is the point 5, comma 6. What was your thought process on that one? Okay, so she cut that one in half. So did you kind of eyeball it more so? Okay, so she's eyeballing it a little bit. Anybody kind of with numbers and counting, anything along those lines? Like how do we know for certain that that's halfway versus eyeballing it? I was thinking of the first thing over A and C. Okay, so you cut this one in half. Yeah. Okay, so he's saying, notice how between 10 and 2, halfway was 6. Didn't that end up being the y coordinate of our midpoint? And then horizontally, for this one, between this 2 right here and this 8, wasn't 5 in the middle of those two? Didn't 5 end up being the middle of that? That's actually sound, right? It's a good thought process. Any other way? So that's one way we can kind of think about this. Let's do this. Uh, let me do a different color since we have so many colors in there right now. Let me do green. Who, who did? Yeah. Oh, oh wait, I got Good. So I was going to start talking slope ideas. So what Gavin just said is he started at B and he went up one. Two, this will keep working. Two, three, four. And then he went left, one, two, three. So he went up four, left three. And then he said, if I did that again, I ended up at point A. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three. So if it was equal steps from this point to this point and this point to this point, didn't this have to be our middle point? Yeah. More so, I probably, if I were me, so Gavin, perfectly fine, I would have said, all right, well, how do I get from B to A? Wouldn't I have gone up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? But if I wanted only halfway, wouldn't I cut that in half? So that's why I would have gone up four. And then we would have gone left the total one, two, three, four, five, six. So if my original slope was up eight, left six, if I just want it to be halfway, wouldn't I just divide each of those by two? And that's what Gavin ultimately ended up doing. Going up four, left three would take us directly to the middle. All right. So that's one way to kind of think of this through before we formalize this a little bit. So now go to this next one and see what we think. So label the coin, the coordinates of C, D, X, and Y. So just label those, those points. And then it says, can you label the coordinates of the midpoint of each segment? Because this one won't work out quite as nicely. But label those two points for C and D. Let's do C, D first. Let's just worry about C and D.
the way we've kind of discussed is what people have said in class works out really perfectly. We were kind of in here and I had people throwing stuff out and I would take a picture of putting them on the board like I normally would for us to discuss. Because what we've talked about a couple of times, some people have said, let's just eyeball it, let's just look at it. What's the middle? And if we did that, a slanted line middle is a little bit trickier. To me, the middle is probably somewhere right around in here-ish. If I'm eyeballing it, don't write that down. Does it appear, if we look for the middle of that, that it's landing on a nice corner that we can identify the X and the Y coordinate? No, and that's where that gets a little bit harder. So it's kind of like guessing and checking a little bit. Guessing and checking is a perfect valuable method in some of the problems you've done over the years. But when guessing and checking won't work, we do want to kind of formalize this a little bit. Gavin had a little bit more of a formal way. Did you apply that to this one, Gavin? Okay, what did you do, Cam? Okay. All right, so um, Cameron or Cam said, go start at D. He's going to go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we start counting our slope, we went up seven. You guys can't really see green particularly well, can you? It's like a one. That's a seven. And then we're going to go left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So then what do we have to do with that, Cam? Good. We want the middle point, right? So we want to cut this in half. So we don't want to do the entire change. Let's just cut that in half. So what this is telling us, you're going to go up three and a half. And then this is why this is a problem, right? Identifying what that exact coordinate is because then you're going to get left five and a half. So let's do our best to count this off. Let me do this in a better color. So go up three and a half, go left five and a half, and see if that takes us to what would appear to be the middle. We still got to kind of figure out what those vertices, what those points are, but plot the point and see if it makes now some sense. So one, two, three and a half. One, two, three, four, five and a half. So I get right here. Pretty good, right? Good. I got good eyes. But I would still be guessing. It could still be any decimal in there. This is our midpoint, but now I need to figure out a way to identify what that is. All right. So there's a few different ways we could do. Um, didn't this Y coordinate start at one? And then didn't we go up three and a half? So what's this new Y coordinate have to be if I started at one? And I go up three and a half. So if, uh, what is it? Good. Why is it staying blue? Good. So the y coordinate has to be four and a half. Oh my gosh. Has to be because we started with a y coordinate of one. We went up three halves, three and a half. The x coordinate wasn't the x coordinate three. And wouldn't we have gone backwards five and a half? So if I start at three and I take five and a half steps backwards, where does that take us? Negative two and a half. Good. Negative two and a half. Those are our coordinates. That's got to be your midpoint. All right. Let me do that. All right. So long term, that's even not necessarily the easiest, simplest way. Think about the middle point. So let's say um, Cam has 20 bucks and I have 30 bucks. What's in the middle of those? 25. When we find the middle, can't we add these together and just divide by two? Isn't that 50 divided by two is 25? Isn't that we can do any time to find a middle value? Isn't that largely what's happening with these? Like what's the difference? And let's cut those things in half. So if we want the midpoints of these, let's say I wanted this X coordinate. Let's do the same thing with our X values. So take this X value of a negative eight, oops, don't write it in parentheses, and add it to the other X value. Let's do this. So take the negative eight, add that. The X value over here is three. Don't we just want the X value in the middle of that? So cut that in half. Negative five divided by two, isn't that the negative two and a half that we found by doing the slopes and by me guessing a little bit and figuring out where that was going to be? Do the same thing with your y coordinates. Take this y coordinate of eight, 
add the other y coordinate of 1, cut that in half, isn't that 9 halves, which is 4.5? Isn't that the y coordinate that we got for our midpoint? So are we really just looking for the middle x value, the middle y value? So that when these are slanted lines and they don't work out nicely like this one, we should be able to do this a little bit quicker. All right, so when we come down here, if I want you, this is now kind of our formal midpoint formula. So find the midpoint between any two points. All we're really doing, like we just did up above, is we're going to add the two x's together and then cut it in half. That's the middle value. Cam has 20 bucks, I have 30 bucks. If we divide our money by half, that's 25. If we do the same thing with our y values, we should find the middle y value. So real quick, go to the other one that I told you not to do yet. Do x, y, so let's label these points. So x has a coordinate, oh, let me make this a little smaller so we can see it all. But label x and y, and then we're just gonna use that little formula and see if it, and then plot that new point and see if it takes us to where we think the midpoint would be. So for this one, if I want the midpoint, what we're saying should be done is just take the x coordinates and add them up. So I'm just going to do this right here. So 8 plus 2 are my x coordinates. We want the middle value, so we'll just divide that sum by 2. And then we're going to take the y coordinates of the 3 and the 8. We're going to add those together, and the middle one should just be that value cut in half. So what that should give us is 10 divided by 2 is 5. Oh, hold on. I screwed up. This should be a negative 8. Yeah, good call. Yeah, speak up, Cam. If I can get this to be a dog on negative 8. Let's just throw it in there. All right, so that should be a negative 5 divided by 2, which is a negative 2.5-ish. Three, negative eight, negative five. All right, so now let's plot that point. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, and a half. Notice how it lands on the line. Does that appear to be smack dab in the middle of those two points? Yeah. So that's our midpoint formula. So if you ever hear the midpoint formula, which obviously you're going to hear a lot today, this is your midpoint formula. Add the x's together, divide by two. Add the y's together, divide by two. That always takes us directly in the middle. Okay? Yeah. What'd you do? I did y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1. Yeah, so you're kind of doing that idea of the slope. Yeah. And then that, then you just count off, figure out where you're going to end up. Same thing would work out. Yep. If we talk midpoint formula, though, just long term, as you're going to hear this in your futures, that's the midpoint formula. Okay? Okay. All right. So this one here, now that we have this, we can expedite this a little bit. We don't want to have to plot these and find our slope, cut that in half, and then do all of that. We just want to rely on this little formula. So if I want the midpoint, the midpoint formula is us simply taking the x's and adding them together. So negative 7 and 5 we add together. Because those are the x coordinates. So x and x, and then you take your y coordinates, do the same exact thing. What's in the middle of 4 and 8? So if we want the middle of 4 and 8, you just add them up, cut it in half, that'll take you to the middle. So our midpoint should be a negative 2 divided by 2, so negative 1. And then 4 plus 8 is 12 divided by 2, which is 6. So if we were to plot those, that's your midpoint. Yeah, right? Much easier than graphing it, correct. That's why we want to do this. So our midpoint, take your x's, add them. So this x and this x we're going to add together. There we go. 
and then just cut it in half. That'll tell us where we're at in the middle. Do the same thing with your Y's. Add those up. If we want the middle, you would cut it in half. So this should be 4 divided by 2. So the x-coordinate is a 2. This is a negative 14 divided by 2, which is a negative 7. So go ahead and do letter C. Everyone's saying this is nice and easy. You'll get a decimal here. Don't freak out when it's a decimal. You can leave it as a fraction or a decimal. Yeah. Their C is blank. Yeah. Oh, did it format weird? This is your... At, all right. At home, they're saying this looks weird in the packet. This should be C if you want to write it someplace else if there's no room to work. But. Yeah, you got to shift it in. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, do your best with it. This this should have been C. It's it's right underneath A in the packet. So sorry. Some formatting issues with a 200 page packet. All right, so first one, add up your x's, so 6 plus 7 is 13, and then we're going to cut that in half. Your y's would have been a negative 3 and 23 added together, that's 20, we're going to cut that in half. So this one's pretty obvious, a 20 divided by 2 is definitely going to be a 10. It's really up to you how you want to handle this. 13 halves, if you leave it as 13 halves, that's totally fine, and I may leave that multiple choice wise. Um, if you want to write it as a decimal, that's also fine, so either the 13 halves, or 6.5, either way is going to be fine. All right, fractions or decimals are both totally fine. Okay, we will get that easy enough. All right, so next page. Oh, I already did it. Don't look at that yet. <laughs> Reason I had to do it, I was like, what's the midpoint theorems again? So I had to remind myself a little bit what's supposed to happen here. All right, so uh, connect to the midpoint of PR and then label it M and connect that to the midpoint of PQ. So do those things. I guess I already have M labeled, right? So you can just look on the screen. That's a vertical line that would have been pretty easy for you to identify anyway. And though the one between P and Q, you could try your our slope idea that Gavin kind of introduced, if it's a nice value, if not, just use a midpoint formula. The midpoint formula is foolproof. It'll work all the time. So whether you do your slope, just kind of how many slopes does it take to go from P to Q and then cut that in half. All right, that would be totally fine. Um, if you do the midpoint formula, which I did up at the top here, this is what, negative 3 comma 3.5, really? Let me screw that up. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I did. That's a seven. Good. So this should be four comma seven. Then connect those two. So it looks a lot of us here are done with this. Go ahead and connect those, and then this y coordinate should be a four. So negative three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, did we get those two points? All right, connect those. So if we now connect these guys, that's midpoint to midpoint.
right, then it says, do you notice anything about the resulting segments, angles, or triangles? So when we drew that in, anything we notice here? Should be hopefully one obvious thing. Yeah, Ahmed. I noticed that there's two triangles. Good. What? Good. We have two triangles, and it's what? Yeah, we've just got done with a bunch of these, right? Like if I have a line that's drawn in here, here here's what I want to also talk about. This line here, how do you think it relates to this line here? What are some words about? They're parallel, right? So let's go ahead. They're both horizontal lines, so we don't have to assume that at all. So notice how NM, so segment MM, is parallel to the segment between QR. All right, real quick, find the midpoint. I know I don't ask you to. Find the midpoint of Q to R. So find the midpoint of this one real quick. It's just a horizontal line. So how many steps does it take to get from Q to R? Just go in half. Don't use the midpoint formula. I think counting these is the easiest. All right, if you count it, wasn't it 14 steps to go from P to Q? Cut that in half to seven. This should be the midpoint. Let's connect those now. Notice how this line, when we go midpoint to midpoint, let's use two arrows. Isn't this line parallel to that line? So not a coincidence. Anytime we connect midpoints of a triangle from one side to the other, it's going to be parallel to the other side. It's not it is. So now, the other thing that we want to recognize, and this is what I had to refresh my memory on a little bit, this was 14 steps we said. So this QR is 14 steps. Count the steps it takes from N to M, that segment that we got by joining the midpoints. So if I go from N to M, how many is that? Seven. And notice how this is one half of the length that it's parallel to. Let's look at this segment. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's look at its parallel side. One, two, three. Isn't this one three to a six? Isn't that half the length? But they have the same weight. Correct. So go down to here's why I did it before that you saw because I need to refresh my memory a little bit on this. Go ahead and put this where you think a midpoint is at. Go ahead where you think this midpoint is at. Connect those. And then the two things that are now true. We're going to put, if we can, so if you read the words there, if we connect the midpoints of two sides to each other, then the resulting segment is parallel to the third side, or the other side. And, so we'll put a little and here, one half the length of the third side. Always. Right? So that's the midpoint theorem of a triangle. All right, so real quick for letter A, given that M and N are midpoints, find the value of X. Well, if this is the middle of this entire length, doesn't that mean if this is seven, that X would have to be seven? then we know it's truly in the middle. That's sort of obvious. That's something we talked about in the four. Tell me what B to C is then. That little theorem we just wrote down. Here's the midpoints. These are parallel to each other. But not only are they parallel, they also have another relationship. And that relationship would tell us that Y must be what? Ella, what's Y? Eleven. Funny Ella. Um, wait. Wait, can you take a question? Yeah, so if I ask for what the length of Y is, so let's go back up to here, Ella. Isn't this segment one half the length of that other segment? So if I give you that that length is set 11, so if this guy is the 11, what would the full side have to be? Sending it to you right now. Did you catch it? No. 
try that again before I throw variables at you guys I'm really confused yet. if that's four now so if these are our midpoints all right Ella I just made this up in my head so this one down here now what does this have to be good Ella. all right so real quick if we go backwards let's say these are our midpoints let's say this is 20 what does this guy have to be 10 it's always half of that third side all right now the next one we're gonna run out of time it's just some variables here so Actually, let's set this up. I told you about the homework already anyway. Isn't this one half of this side? So doesn't it take two of these, two of these to equal this? So I'm going to take that x minus a 1. I need two of those, right? Doesn't it take two 11s to make a 22? It makes two 4s to make an 8. So it would take two of these to make it equal to the 3x minus an 11. And then you just have a quick little simple equation that you can solve. Okay, follow all that, rushing through this. Okay, that's the last problem. That's why I, I wanted to kind of rush, make sure we got through all that. So you should be able to do the homework. I, I don't think you're going to find it too bad. Um, so it's just those next two pages. If you have any questions, we can talk about it in the morning. All right, okay, we'll see you guys. Have a good night. Okay, uh, so, Yes, Alexandra. Um, can you uh, scroll back up to the sure. uh, where it says if like the midpoint of um side of a triangle because I didn't get the first one written down. Sure. And I'll clear it up, clean it up a little bit. You didn't understand this, Alan? <laughs> I don't know where you at. And I heard Cam say 14, so it's like but I was like, how did he get 14 though? Oh, the one that we just found. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have a good day. All right, you too. See you guys. Did you get it, Alexandra? Yes, thank you. Okay, no problem. Have a good day. All right, see you, Kim.